Welcome back everyone. I'm on my way home from work again and figured I'd take y'all along with the ride. I don't really have anything of mine I wanted to cover today in particular. I have some ideas for the bikes that, for the bike that I plan on doing that I kind of plan on going over. It's not set in stone yet, it's just coming in the near future. I do want to give a big thank you to, to all the support that I've gotten since last episode. It means a lot. Um, I can't thank y'all enough. I'm, I'm speechless. I'm just super grateful for, for the amount of support I've gotten. And I appreciate you guys. But same as last video, if you do enjoy this video, if you enjoyed the last video, think about subscribing, leave a comment down below, hit the like button, share, whatever you want to do, however you can help, I greatly appreciate it. Back to, back to what I wanted to do with the bike, my, I reached out to somebody that lives near me, and I'm actually in the process of getting both my tank and my rear fender painted. And it's gonna, my idea right now is I wanna do like a white kind of woodland style camo just because it's so different. And I really want this bike to, to represent me. But with that being said about what I want with this bike, I also have plans to basically remove everything that's Harley about it. I want from the guts to the paint to just be changed. I really despise Harley and I guess this is kind of an honest review about my time with Harley. I've had a pretty bad time honestly for a bike that's so new between just a cheap chrome plating that's already either chipping or it's corroding and it's not that I don't take care of this bike like I wash it routinely I I do routine maintenance on it like I'm not abusing the shit out of this bike but it's not taking care of me and because of that I just I can't sympathize with Harley like they're going under and I'm seeing why at like first hand and that really sucks because for the price you pay for a Harley you should get a lot better bike I could have spent less money and gotten a Japanese bike that did more things arguably and would probably last longer yes I live near the coast and there's salt in the air but like I said, I wash this thing routinely at least once a week, if not more. So the fact that I'm having to deal with corrosion and just all these other these other side symptoms is kind of mind-boggling to me. Like, where is all the money going that I spent for this bike? That's I'm just super confused at where all that money went. What did it go into? Because I don't have the fastest engine on the market. I don't have the newest suspension on the market. It's a really bare bones Harley that's still costing me quite a bit of money. You guys can go on Harley's website and look up what a 2020 Street Bob goes for. They're not the cheapest of bikes for what I'm getting and it really, it really gets to me. Because there's, there's no excuse for that. And from my experience, it really looks like they're trying to, to save money in places where they shouldn't be trying to save money. If they're going to save money, then they need to lower the prices. That's just how it is. And I don't understand why they can't see that and that it's only going to hurt their market. So if you're thinking about getting a Harley or whatnot, just do be aware especially with anything that's chrome plated it's it doesn't last long especially if you live near the water i've got friends and family that own harleys and have chrome plating on their bikes and i don't even have a lot the only thing that's chrome on my bike was the original levers but i changed those to black and the wheels they're they're chrome spoked wheels so 
with that being said the fact that i have barely any chrome and the little chrome that i do is corroding immediately is just asinine it shouldn't be like that but beyond that if you're thinking about buying a harley or you just bought one or whatever the case may be just keep that in mind like if you plan on keeping the chrome the stock harley chrome then you need to wash this bike like daily if you take it out wash it if it's been sitting wash it like it's very very sensitive chrome and then on another topic is with the black paint that's on it it's super sensitive to scratches it doesn't it doesn't last it doesn't hold up well this you guys can probably see this on camera i've got a big scratch mark right here that's my fault what's up buddy that's my fault and i take full responsibility for that that's a phone case mount that i totally regret doing but i don't plan on i didn't plan on keeping this black to begin with so i'm not too heartbroken about it but beyond that even when I take all the proper steps to ensure that the paint shouldn't spider web when I'm cleaning it or whatever the case may be, it's still spider web and it looks like a spider put all over my my gas tank and it's ridiculous. It shouldn't be like that. What's up? I don't really know what's going on. I don't have any spare change. But either way, the, the like I was saying, the black paint is so sensitive to anything. It's an awful coat. And you, you'll hear that from other people who own Harleys that like are actually honest about them. Whatever the black coat is, whether it's matte or it's gloss or whatever coat it is, it's super sensitive to scratching. It doesn't have a good protectant on it. So if you're going to buy a black Harley and you want to keep it the black, then you need to think about putting on like a ceramic coat or some sort of extra protective layer once you buy it. Because at this point for me, it's way too late. Not that I planned on doing that, but it's, it's beyond repair for me. I have to get a whole new paint job. So granted, I could probably take a buffer to it and get a lot of this, the spider web out, but I've got some pretty serious scratches on here that uh, definitely won't come out with a buffer. And then that amongst other things, like I've taken just about this whole bike apart. The only thing I haven't taken apart is the engine yet because I've had no reason to. But whether it's the handlebars, the grips, my foot pegs, the exhaust, like I've touched everything except the engine. The hardware they use, what's up buddy? The hardware they use is subpar in my opinion. It, I had a horrible problem with the screws just completely stripping and having to drill them out just to get the screw out because it wouldn't grab any of my tools. And it wasn't that I was like doing it wrong or anything. I knew exactly what I was doing. I had the, the exact right size tool and it still stripped sure it out. It's just a really soft material that they use. And it almost feels like they freaking weld it into where it is. Whatever glue, I'm sure it's just like a some sort of JB weld or whatever the hell it is, but the the hardware just doesn't hold up if you are trying to take it out i don't know how they do it at the harley dealership i don't know if it happens all the time and they just have a bunch of hardware on, on hand i know i had to go there before to replace some of these but that was because one of the bolts got dropped and completely lost that's not their fault that's my fault but when it comes to like my foot peg mostly down on my foot peg and where my rear brake assembly is 
I've replaced a lot of the, that hardware with a lot better hardware because I was tired of dealing with it. I've put new hardware in and I haven't had a problem since. I've taken it off a few times, I've put it back on a few times and it's never failed me. So the fact that I couldn't even get one or two uses out of the hardware for working on my exhaust or whatever the case may be, just it's very subpar so do keep that in mind if you plan on getting at least the new harley i can't speak for the old ones how the hardware held up but the new ones the hardware doesn't hold up and if you plan on buying one and heavily modifying it then keep in mind that their hardware is in my opinion very cheap hardware it's not good and i don't think a lot of people would argue with me on that Harley overpriced all their stuff from their oil to their parts and that's just how they've always been. There's a reason that Harley is dying. And I don't want to say that. I don't want to see Harley die. They, they're an American icon when it comes to motorcycling. But the fact that when you try to work on the bike yourself or when you try to try to do the right steps, it just doesn't go well for you they i don't know if it's on purpose or not but they have a way of making it so you should bring it into the shop if you really want to get work done without without having to do a lot of extra work granted i have saved a lot of money even though i've had to do a ton of work when it comes to installing all new hardware and getting the old hardware out but I've saved a lot of money because I think for your first uh, checkup on a brand new bike, I think it's like $500 just to do an oil change and look at some things that you could easily do yourself. There's no, like, somebody with very, very few experiences and not a very large knowledge base when it comes to motorcycles would easily be able to do an oil change just by watching a few YouTube videos and just like learning your bike. I think you should do that anyways. What's up, buddy? I think you should do that anyways because it's good to know what you're riding or what you're driving for that matter, whether you're driving a car or a bike or a boat, whatever the case may be. I don't think it hurts for you to kind of go above and beyond and understand what you're driving. I'm not saying you need to become a master technician, but understanding the basics of what you're driving and how you can fix it when you need to fix it on the fly is very handy knowledge to have. So that is something else to keep in mind that if you do plan on getting a bike or you already own a bike, but you never took the time to, to actually learn and understand about the engine that you're riding on and the platform that you're riding on, then I would heavily consider that and recommend that. And even though there were a lot of times while I've been working on this bike that have straight up just just given me an incredibly hard time and pissed me off so much, I've actually had a lot of fun because the more I do to it, the less it becomes a Harley and the more it becomes my bike and what I want it to do. Eventually, I plan on taking the badges off because I'm not a walking billboard. That's what I've always said. And if I'm gonna pay this kind of money, I don't want a big giant Harley badge on it. Some people probably hate that. Some people think I should probably keep it, but I don't want it. I want just a badgeless, custom style bobber build. And that's my plan. Eventually, I wanna get a new rear fender, but that's a ways down the line because it's not really that important. At least not right now. I'd rather do engine stuff before I replace the fender. Put this in neutral. I don't feel like holding the clutch. Literally just missed this light. Oop, I don't think he waved. But he was also turning. Hi, Viz. But yeah, like I was saying with Harley dying, like I don't want to see them die. I think they are an American icon and I think they'll go down to the history books as like one of the, the most important, what's up buddy? One of the most important bike manufacturers out there, but they don't have good business practices. The fact that if you go online, you, you'll find out that they're cutting next year's lineup by quite a few bikes. They're having to fire uh, a numerous amount of people 
and they're just trying to cut corners where I don't think they need to. If they really want to come back, then they need to bring out these new bikes they keep talking about, these new lineups that are going to appeal to a younger generation because not many people want a big giant bagger, especially at a young age. They want something that's small, it's nimble, it's quick, that's something you can have fun on and not, not that you can't have fun on a bagger, but something that is going to be a lot zippier than what they have. Like, I know they have a, a Street Fighter coming out that I don't know any specs on. I'm not sure if they're out. I haven't seen uh, any specs on the bike, how fast it's going to be, how heavy it's going to be, what the price tag is going to be. But that's really going to make a difference because you can release the Street Fighter just like they did with the Livewire. That would be a huge appeal to a younger generation but it costs $30,000 so not many people of the younger generation have $30,000 to just go blow on a motorcycle so whoever their target audience was for that is kind of beyond me I'm not sure if it was just the idea of, of getting it out and getting it out to the public and kind of getting Harley's name back on the board but it's really gonna come down to whether they release the dual sport at a reasonable price whether they release the Street Fighter and it needs to have comparable specs for the price range and they've got a few new sportsters that are kind of weird and different looking that they need to come out with because it's going to be one of those bikes that you just you haven't seen anything like it before so that right there is going to attract a whole number of people because it's it, it just makes them look different it, it's kind of wild how harley's been slowly dying but it, it almost seems like other companies are starting to do better like kawasaki they came out with the h2 uh, one or two years ago and that got them so i could be wrong don't quote me on that maybe it's three whatever it it's so wild because that got them so much attention between between youtubers using it people racing it it's a bike like that hasn't been seen before the last time something like that happened would have been suzuki coming out with the hayabusa with a turbo in it which kind of blew people's mind at, at that point because putting a turbo or putting a supercharger wasn't super popular in your bike and like now you can buy a supercharger and turbo kits for different model bikes like i know i found a company that makes one for this but it's like nine thousand dollars to put a turbo on this or no it's nine thousand dollars to put a supercharger and then like eleven to thirteen thousand dollars to put a turbo on it something like that and it's just insane to think that just to order a turbo that would fit this motorcycle would cost that much i mean i understand because it's a limited market they kind of have a monopoly on it for turbos that come ready to fit but it's it's just kind of wild to me and you if you really want to take the time you can go out and buy a turbo and make it fit yourself but for the average day backyard builder it's just easier to have a part that fits and then you install it but that's the each his own like some people want to have a bike that they can kind of really mess around on and be able to try to jimmy rig a turbo onto it or some sort of supercharger but on a different note if anybody watching this does art or enjoys doing art i'm looking for some art to, to put on the channel and to uh, post on instagram and across uh, social medias and whatnot so if you want to make something based on like the channel's picture or a picture on instagram 
go ahead and you can DM, DM it to me on Instagram and I'll post some of the ones that I get in on Instagram and I'll be sure to tag you guys and yeah, I mean who knows I might even put some of y'all in uh, in the next video and of course if you're in the video the link will be down in the description where people can find your social media so if that's something you like to do or you, you want to get into and shoot shoot your shot then just DM me over on Instagram at the official nut link will be down in the description below there you'll be able to find what I'm up to, what I've been up to, any plans I have. I'm in the process of making a Facebook page for the channel. It's not up quite yet. It might be up by the time this video comes out. But if it is, you can look down in the description. I'll put a link to it as well. But yeah, that's that's about all I, I got planned for today. I'm just gonna, gonna finish my ride home here and get back and relax. Um, like I said in the first video, I got a trip to Mississippi coming up where I'll be reviewing a few different bikes. So look forward to that. That should be coming in a, a few weeks here, a couple weeks at least. Um, like I said, you'll be able to find my social medias down in the description below. You'll be able to see everything I'm doing. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, think about hitting that subscribe button. And any support you guys can show, whether it's a like, it's a comment, going over to my Instagram and giving a follow, what's up buddy, is seriously greatly appreciated. I, I love all the support and everything. I can't thank you guys enough for just showing me so much love. Um, but until next week, I will see you guys in the next video.